This video serves as a, a summary of homework 7. You are going to be asked to do three main subjects. The first is to extend homework 5 with the monadic operators. And you will also be asked to change all the conditionals into matches. So the idea is don't use fields such as lambda args, but instead do a pattern matching on lambda and unpack the, the lambda structure. So same thing for all the other structures. So basically you will get 100% on this point just by not having a single cond or a field call in your, in your code. Next thing you are going to be asked is to support multiple parameters and multiple arguments. So multiple parameters in, in lambdas and multiple arguments in function calls. And this is merely um, code transformation operation, as you will see. This is not, you don't need to change your interpreter to support uh, multiple arguments. So basically this is the first foray into writing a source-to-source -source compiler, which is really, if you recall our lecture on, on macros, the same kind of skill that you would be doing if you were doing a macro. And finally, you're going to extend the programming language to support the if construct and, of course, booleans and built-ins like we've done in homework 3 or 4? 3, I think. So it's basically making our interpreter a bit more robust and more closer, more close to or closer to uh, what a a real programming language would be, you know, at least you want to have booleans, numbers, functions, uh, which you already had, but also conditionals. So we're adding support for conditionals, and of course we want our functions to support multiple arguments, not just a single one, but in our semantics we're only going to support one, right? It's really just syntactic sugar, as you will see. So the first bit is um, writing the interpreter. So I have here the PDF of homework seven. So you have this section, which is what I'm showing you now. And you are going to be asked to uh, re-implement DEVAL EXP and DEVAL term, but now add support for effectful uh, functions. So this, so the first change that you need to do is really to change, you know, you have um, your DEVAL EXP, right? Which takes, um, a memory and an environment, right? And now you're going to change this, and the memory is going to become a parameter of the effectful operation. So your new DEVAL, um, so you would define the EXP, right? DEVAL EXP, and then inside here you have something, right? But now the new version is DEVAL EXP. Uh, now only has environment and expression, so very close to what you have in homework 4, right? Uh, and now, to support that, you need to pass the memory as the third parameter. Or, you just use the do notation. eval exp and exp, and you do that. This is a do notation. Uh, because as you know, if you write a do notation, you don't have to pass the lambda here. That is created by using the binds. Um, so that's basically it. That's what you're going to be asked to do. Uh, let me comment this out. So this is um, existing version. What is being asked in homework 7. This is what is being asked in homework 7 with the do notation. Of course, the version with the do notation is what I hope you are going to do because that is generally uh, less code. It will be way shorter. It's mostly eliding code from, from your uh, homework 5. Okay, so this is what we're going to do in this part. But the way I recommend you to approach the exercise is first try to implement put, push, and get as monadic operations, right? So what you want to do 
just to make it very clear, you know, your environment get takes um, a memory and the environment and an X, right? So let's say you were defining um, M X, right? And then there's something here. And now what you want to define is and get, which takes what? Takes E and X. And now inside of here, you have a lambda that takes the memory. And basically, you should call environment here, call environment get here, right? So pretty simple. Uh, basically, this is easy points to get, and they will already get you some good motivation to start the homework. So the problem with this homework, uh, and really all the things that are related, um, basically all the answers, you have to complete the interpreter first. You know, if you don't have an interpreter, you won't be able to do uh, the extension. You are able to do this code, but you won't be able to, to, to write the extension. So to be able to write this code, you, you certainly need these three to be implemented properly. So I would start with those. Make sure you understand how to write effectful operations. Um, so for those you don't use the do notation, right? Because these are defined as is. Uh, but for the interpreter, for the interpreter, um, you will need, you know, for uh, when you implement evalueXP, you do need to use the do notation because uh, that will make the code way simpler and way shorter. And then it will be closer to what you have in the slides. So in the slides, you just have, um, you know, let me. Let me see if I can. Four fifty. So if you go to, oh, where is it? Right. So if we go to lesson thirty, and you recall this, so you're the the branch for function application is simply going to have one, two, three, four assignments. Because as we've learned, when we have an effectful operation, we had three, you know, three calls per, per expression here. Why? Because we need to pass the memory, unpack the memory, you know, split the EFF, take the memory, put it on one side, and then pass the memory to the next thing. Well, that's what bind does, EFF bind. So really, um, your code will become way simpler if you just use it directly. If you just use the do, do monad. So um, where is uh, the other lesson? 27. So 27, we have, um, yeah. So you see, this is something similar to what you have in homework, homework 5, right? And with the do notation, right, if I were to write this code, right, let's say this is, let's say this would be, let's say that this were my uh, original code of EvalueXP. Of course it's not, in your case it's going to be one of the branches, right? But let's say this, this was, um, this was your original code. Uh, let me make sure the parentheses are closed properly. Okay, so now parentheses are correct. Let's say this is your original code, right? You have the memory here, and now what you want to do is you want to convert this into a do notation. How do you do that? Well, first thing you do is you remove mem from here, and then you do do, and then you select all of this. Right, and you add the parentheses. So now this is all inside a do. Now what do I do? I need to assign. Uh, now everything is effectful, right? So the memory is being passed around. So the second thing you second thing you do is just remove the memory from everything, and this is no longer nvron. Now this becomes nv push. Uh, this no longer takes memory, and of course, this unpacking is done automatically by um, by the 
the bind operator. So now the only thing you need to do is this. So you can remove this code, remove uh, this. This would be what? Uh, env2, right? Because it's a push. Uh, and finally, this would be v2. And finally, you want to return v2, right? So what you want to do, you want to do pure v2. Okay, so if, if you change from, actually, let me copy paste. This is, um, I'm going to leave both versions and upload it to the Exer site so that you guys have it. I'm just going to dismiss it here. So this is the version v4, v4 do notation, and this is after do notation. I'm going to call it develop. Okay, so this is before the notation, and this is after do notation translation. So you would have something like this, where I'm assuming I would be returning, let's say I'm returning uh, here, let's say I'm returning v2 plus m mem3. Okay, let's say that this code, the end, should return the ff that represents v2 plus mem3. So I would translate this code into uh, this example here. So these are two are equivalent, but one uses the do notation, the other the other one does not. Okay, and this is what you're going to be asked. You're being asked to do in homework seven is really just uh, translate this code into this simplified form. And as you can see, no memory is being passed. All the memory is, goes away because that's the, the job of the do notation and the, and the EFF bind. Okay, so we've looked at this. Um, right, the, the last thing you have to be careful is just revise the lecture on match. And now you need to change your code from uh, whenever you see a cond, change that to do a match, and make sure you don't use, uh, you know, the all the fields. So like, like we have, uh, in this case, we are calling EFF result. Of course, you won't have that, but oh, I don't. In this example, I don't have it. So actually, it's not a good example. Let's say I wanted to get um, v1 closure and of v1. Let's say that v1 is a, is a closure, right? So to be able to do that, I would uh, need to do a match of v1, and then say that this is closure, um, and then you say that you have an app, okay, and then that call. And then you would do something here. Let's say we do the rest of this here. Right. So basically convert all your conditionals to um, to matches, and there's a slide that explains that in, in the previous lesson. Right? So if you go to 30 34, um, not 34, let's see if it's 33. Yeah, you really want to look at this example. You don't need a defined match, but really uh, how to do pattern matching. This is what you're expected to write, right? Um, this version versus this version. Okay. So that's the slide you want to look at uh, when you're addressing uh, this point. Again, if you if you want to do homework seven and you haven't finished homework five, just contact me and I will give you a solution of homework five. You will then be unable to submit homework five again um, because otherwise, you know, you have the solution. So it does, has no point in doing that. And then. Uh, basically, these are examples for handling multiple parameters. The idea is that you want to write two functions, or write a function that translates code. And the way I'm going to ask you to do is really 
have a function that just breaks the lambda, another one that breaks the apply, and then one that combines both. So you're expected to provide those. Uh, and this is some examples of inputs. You know, if you have a lambda that has x, y, z, as you, I hope you remember from uh, the curry lesson, if I want to curry this lambda, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return a lambda with x and then another lambda with I, y and finally a lambda with z. So you have to be able to break down this list into a list of lambdas, right? Or not a list of lambdas, that nested lambdas, sorry. Um, here, whenever it's um, empty lambda, you have to provide at least one, so you have to be careful with that. Um, and finally, of course, if you have a, a function call with zero parameters, you have to pass void. And if you have a function call with a list of elements, you have to write, be able to construct this nested function application, right? So you have to generate code. Your input is going to be a single apply, and you have to generate a nested uh, apply. So this is tech typically a fold kind of operation. This is also a fold type of operation. Finally, for uh, primitives, uh, basically what I'm asking you is to be able to understand these rules and try to implement them. Keep in mind that they are effectful, right? So that's why you have this little arrow here. So you, after you do, so you should do this after you do that first pass where you you do the apply the do notation translation that I just talked about. And then after that, think about supporting the if, the conditional, um, where you have to evaluate it. And the way you should uh, interpreted it as 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 this, so it's a a nested function where this represents a function call, and this the result is passed to this function call, and this would be another function call, which is just another way of saying if you interpret this as a in the uncurried form, it would be the if that you expect, but because this is curried, or all our functions just take one parameter, you have to do this currying of function application. So if you understood this slide, you will understand why the if is in this way. If you don't understand it, just keep in mind that this means a triply nested apply, right? So this is one function application, this is another one, and this is another one. Um, you do have to be careful when you evaluate it, you have to do a match after you evaluate, right? So this is a novelty, something we haven't seen before, but now you do have to take into account this this conditional, right? So you're going to evaluate this, and then you're going to do a match on the result, and either is false and you do what is here, or you do or this is not false and you evaluate the, the second inside. But it's important not to evaluate both of them uh, because that would produce um, incorrect results. So you will fail the test cases. So make sure you only evaluate the correct branch according to the condition that is uh, returns from evaluating EC. And of course for this you also need to write the match. Uh, next thing you need to implement is built-in. I will give you the built-in function and it works exactly like in homework 3. So I, I think this is like free points as long as you understand how that works. Uh, also look at the, the other so slide that I showed you. Uh, oops. Here it is. So this is another example uh, formalize, formalizing the notion of built-in. Um, so you can use that as an example of what you expect here. As you will see, built-in is actually um, a new thing of the, a new term of the AST, right? This is another thing of the AST. It's a special struct that says f is a built-in function. So you can evaluate any variable and it can become a built-in. And that's basically it. That's the last question. I hope you uh, have everything you need to be able to do homework 7 and I hope you have fun with it.